What is going on, my Atomic Auto Works friends? So guess what? As everybody knows, every Saturday, or almost every Saturday, we put on custom car classes, do a lot of upholstery classes, and some custom auto body classes as well. For those of you who missed our last class we had, it was all about doing diamonds. So the first part of the class, we taught basic how to set up diamonds and how to draw them out. And then we moved across and started doing double diamonds and some different cool stitch work and alternating patterns. Like this one here, we did triple stitch diamonds, which is kind of cool with different colors. So what I want to do is I want to go through and show you the old style way. Then I want to show you a production way and then show you a really cool way. <clears throat> Many people that watched some of our teaser videos saw that for last week, uh, leatherseats.com sent us some really nice templates here. So they sent us a bunch of these really cool templates that speed up the process. And when I say that, I want to show you because saying it isn't enough. So here we go. We're going to start off by showing you a small piece here. What we do is you want to make sure that your pieces are squared so that everything's symmetrical, especially with diamonds or graphics, because if your diamonds are shifted even slightly, when you go to stitch in your next pattern on it, if this piece is bigger than this piece or vice versa, it looks horrible. So what I'm going to do is we're just going to do some simple three by two inch wide diamonds. And so I'm going to plot this out right now. I already snapped our center line and made a 90 degree angle with a square. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot this out and we're going to do our point is a P line. So every three inches is a point, six inches is a point. And up here we don't have three inches. So we're going to have inch and a half is half of three inches. So this is going to be our center and we're going to put center lines in each of these. Now, <clears throat> because we want it two inches wide, you can see we plotted this out. We have our, our center points, or our points, and then our centers. So what I'm going to do is, <clears throat> on our point side, we're going to go one, two, one, two. And then we're going to measure this down. <clears throat> inch and a half, inch and a half, half and an inch, inch and a half, half and an inch. So this is point, center, point, center, point, center. Same thing here. Half, okay. So now we have our points here. I'm just going to connect all the dots and actually grid this out. And the reason we grid it is because it will very easily show us if something's symmetrical or not. Now, everywhere we have our point, that's where the diamond tip's gonna come to. So that's gonna be right center there. So we wanna have our um, next diamonds the furthest point. So we're gonna do two inches, and then every center we're gonna split that. <clears throat> so at the point, or at the center, sorry, we're gonna do um, one and one, one, two, one, two. The center will do one and one, one, two, center, one and one, one, two, one, two. <clears throat> now we can connect the dots. One, two. If you skip these um, and not don't have the, all the points sometimes, you'll go through and your line might not be exactly where you need it, which will end up making the diamonds off kilter. So I like to do as many plots as possible. And now we want to connect them. We want them to always, which I'll do right here and show you, make sure that they intersect right on the center of the diamond. So you want your points to intersect completely on the center line here. If they're off a little bit, they're going to end up being wobbly and you can't have that. And they're also going to be not symmetrical. <clears throat> Okay, so now you can see we actually have our diamonds gridded out. So you see how long that took. So now we're going to show you a technique we use for production. <clears throat> and this is called pouncing. Not like Winnie the Pooh and Tigger 2 pouncing. So this is a big pattern, obviously, for something else. <clears throat> but what we do is now we'll take our center line. We can center it up on our pattern wherever we want it. And the way we make these is we actually cut the needle in our sewing machine. We plot it out once and then we sew through all the designs so that we have these holes so that the pounce powder 
we'll go through it. So now we're going to put this on here. And our pounce pad has seen better days, but I'm going to push this right through. When you're using a pounce, you always want to hold it firm and push through in one direction if you try to go back and forth. So now you can see <clears throat> when it pounces out, we have our diamonds. And then we could come through here with either sharp chalk or the space pens. I choose to do the space pens. The only problem when you pounce it is you have this pounce dust on here now. And when you're trying to pounce out over this, it kind of drags the dust through everything and makes a mess. And sometimes you have some blind spots that you missed, which we'll show you. So I'm going to go through and do these, but a boom, we'll do this one. Okay. So now we went into this and what I'll do is I'm just going to wipe the pounce powder off. And unfortunately it did better than I thought it would because usually it doesn't show up as well, but you can see the ones we plotted out with the indexing it took me a quite a bit, quite a while to do. This one was fairly quick. And then thanks to leatherseats.com. <clears throat> so if you don't have a CNC computer, which none of us here really like the CNC stuff because it kind of takes away from the art of our craft. Um, so this one here, if you look at it, it already has the points in here. So you could just put this on your center line, which is great. Um, and then it has the lines made in here. So we could just literally go through it, which we have to use the space pen with a cartridge, just a cartridge. So it fits in here. So you just drop this down here. You could see your center line in there. And now all we do is we have to just fill these out. <clears throat> Just want to make sure you get every one. And then look down and make sure we didn't miss any. That should be it. So now, boom. That was fast. And no mess. But I did miss one. <clears throat> but so now you can just come through with your straight edge, fill in the gaps. Everything's already out, outlined there. And if you really are. Um, questioning what you do, you could mark the little holes too. I just don't mark the center holes on them. This way I like a lot better because it's cleaner. The benefits you have by doing it by hand is if you're kind of, <clears throat> kind of um, a perfectionist like I am, I actually make our diamonds to the size based off of the piece we're doing. Because um, to me, proportion is everything. If you have a huge piece and you do tiny diamonds, sometimes it looks ridiculous. And if you have a small piece with large diamonds, that looks ridiculous. So this way we can make them exactly the way we want it. And then you also don't look like the guy next to you with the same exact diamonds on their bike or car or truck. So now I'm just going to take this piece here and I'm going to quickly put some sew foam behind it and then we'll stitch these out. But you can see here too, it's actually a good example. So when you use the pounce powder, see how lighter it is in comparison because the, pot, the powder gets caught up in the space pen. This one here actually is harder to see. So as you're going through sewing, it's very easy to wipe it off and not be able to um, see the line. So I'm gonna put some sew foam on the back of this and we're gonna sew it. So when you're cutting your sew foam out, you want to try to keep it right on the edge. I'm kind of rushing because we're doing a quick video here, but you want to keep your sew foam really straight and on the edge because if it's at an angle when you follow along to sew it, you could actually fall off of the foam and then your stitching gets kind of wobbly. Okay, so now let's sew it up. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to do single diamond, double diamond, and triple diamond. I made these small so that we don't have to be here forever. So single diamond first. We're gonna do an orange thread because it's very vibrant. I'll stitch this out. I 
What's great about the space pens is the line is so small that you're able to stay on it without deviating and it makes your lines a lot straighter. Okay, so here's single, and now single, and now we're gonna do double, then we'll put them all side by side, and you can take a look at them. The difference is, so when we, I do double, uh, single, I follow the line, so we stay right on this original line that we did. When I do doubles, I stitch on either side of the line, and then when we go to do the triple, we're gonna stitch in the middle and on both sides. So let's try this. We're gonna do our double now. Two, 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 two. So that's good. And now we'll do the triple stitch. So we got single, double, and this guy is going to be triple. And triple stitch is really fun on small things and once. When you start doing huge panels, it really takes a long time. When you're doing it the same color, sometimes if you don't pay attention, you'll do this one, and then you might do two on the other line, so then the triple stitch is actually too wide. So what I do is I just make sure I'm doing, I know that this was my center one now, so I'm gonna come down this side and immediately go back the other side. So I don't have to worry about it not being symmetrical. Okay, a little rough, but we got through it. So now you can see, this is actually a good example too because it shows you how different the puffiness is with each one. We only do these on quarter inch sew foam, so it's not pronounced as much. When you do it on half inch sew foam, it's the um, pile is a lot higher. So now you got single, double, and triple, all with, well, different patterns. This one we did by hand, this one we pounced, and this one was with the um, kit from leatherseats.com. So please remember to check us out. Go to our website, atomicautoworks.com. You can see what classes we're doing next. This Saturday, we are doing patterning. So we're gonna do a basic patterning from 10.30 to 11.30, then advanced patterning from 11.30 to 12.30. Like, comment, subscribe, and ring the bell.